Safely deorbiting such a large spacecraft with several heavy pieces reaching the ocean surface is a precisely calculated and time critical operation, perfectly synchronized by the station's partners and coordinated with international aeronautic and maritime authorities. The instant when the interface is cut, when all communication links are severed with the ATV, will have been programmed to the second on board the ISS. We can't say to our Russian colleagues, hang on, give us 10 more minutes as we could do for the docking, for the separation, this is not possible. All going well, the last hooks holding the two craft together will open and the springs compressed upon arrival will push the Johannes Kepler away. One minute after the separation, ATV will be far enough and will fire its thrusters to distance itself from the orbital complex. Aboard, it will have about one ton of propellant in its tanks for the re-entry. The ATV will then orbit the Earth 18 times before the final deorbit burn that will plunge it back towards the Pacific Ocean. First, we'll go from a nominal circular orbit to a highly elliptical orbit which where the, the nearest point to the Earth is getting closer to the point where we want to be. Once this is done and we have done our calculation, the second time will be the real orbit to make sure that we enter at the right angle with the right speed into the atmosphere. If it would not be the, the right angle, we would bounce off the atmosphere and we would be into space again. The uninhabited target zone is a 2,000 kilometer corridor 250 kilometers wide. Prior warnings will have been given to shipping and to air traffic. Unlike the September 2008 re-entry of the first ATV, the Jules Verne, which had been filmed by aircraft providing spectacular views of the fireball returning to Earth, the Johannes Kepler will only be monitored by a NASA-supplied special black box whose sensors will record and send back the breakup data of the tumbling ATV. The first parts that will be uh, fall off the, uh, the spacecraft will be the solar panels. Then we will move the insulation, all the insulation around, uh, around the ATV, and then the structure will start breaking up, so the whole structure here. We also have explosions of the tanks, so the oxygen and the fuel tanks will explode into the atmosphere, and then a few heavier parts, the real metallic parts, will fall into the ocean. Seeing the spacecraft that many people have worked on for so many years, that the flight engineers have nurtured during nearly four months, and which has been greatly appreciated by the astronauts aboard the ISS, will obviously be a very emotional moment. Obviously it's a, it's a pity to see it uh, as a fireball falling into the Pacific Ocean. On the other hand, it doesn't come by surprise, so we all know uh, it's a non-recoverable vehicle. But obviously it gives us motivation looking in the future to develop something which is recoverable. Meanwhile, preparations are well advanced for the next ATV mission. The Eduardo Amaldi will be shipped to Kourou in August with a launch campaign leading to liftoff scheduled in early March next year.